What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys, I want to bring you a radical idea. And I'm not saying that this is fantastic. I'm not saying that it's something that we can or even the team should do. But I do think it would make things very, very interesting for the next and possibly future sets. So I haven't thought through the numbers. I haven't thought through all the implications. I'm just sharing the raw idea with you, uh, which is pulled in from Parallel, right? So I, I like the way, and I think that Parallel has a unique design in terms of how they use demand to determine the amount of cards, right? It's current player demand and future player demand to determine the amount of cards. Um, and I think some of that we could take a lesson and apply it to newer sets in the future. So the main reason is this, right? We are burning pretty much all of the Rebellion packs at this point. You know, it was very front heavy. People bought Rebellion uh, right at the beginning of the sale, you know, December, January. But since then, it's been pretty much burning or removing 25 million from the store uh, like every single day. Yes, are there some days where there's purchases? Absolutely. But this number going down means nothing to anyone, right? Like I, I watch it go down but it doesn't make me or I don't believe like anybody else be like, oh, you know what? I need to go and buy these packs right before they all run out. Like that's only going to matter in like, I don't know, October, November, when we actually start to get really close to the bottom. But for eight months, right, from from uh, January all the way to uh, September, we'll call it. There's there's just not much going on, and and this number doesn't mean much. It's available, but we just burn it every day, and nobody nobody cares, right? Granted, yes, I know a lot that the the way that the team has gone about things this year is not necessarily focusing on rebellion, right? But they're they're trying to they're trying to uh, update the game to bring new players in. Hopefully, that happens before rebellion packs run out. But all that all that being said, I think a crazy radical way to design things would be to follow parallels playbook now for those unfamiliar i'm just going to give you the very basic lowdown and then how i would translate this over to um how i would translate it over to splinterlands in parallel they sell a bunch of packs right for for nfts and so if you buy the packs i believe they're it's either first edition or special edition whatever it is you get those cards and if there is demand in the future what you can do is you can, it's not burning, it's sinking prime, right? It essentially goes to the Dow, or part of it, most of it goes to the Dow, I think, or like their their uh, prime sink. Uh, some of it goes to the team, some of it goes wherever, right? But basically, you take prime, you have to pay in prime, right? So it also depends on like the price and value of prime. Um, you put it, you put it into the card, or you put, you know, you pay the fee, and then you're able to make what's called an echo, right? Now, an echo is not like a first edition, but it's still an NFT that is that can that can earn you rewards, right? So it's not a ghost card, it's but it's it's like a, a second tier or a second edition, we'll call it whatever, whatever, however you want to define it, right? It was first edition, then they create this second edition that is born from the cards that currently exist as well as the demand, it's demand driven, and for anybody willing to pay that, right? Anybody willing to pay that cost. So they're only gonna do it if they want, A, want extra cards, or B, want, uh, you know, something, they, they know that somebody's gonna be able to buy it, or, or there's that there's a demand. So that's the quick and dirty lowdown on, on Prime, and I, or Parallel, and I may not even have that fully correct. How I would apply that, right? How I would parallel it over, yeah, pun intended. How I would parallel that over to Splinterlands is imagine there was only, and I, again, I don't know the numbers on this, but this is what I'm trying to get at. Let, let's say there were only 500,000 packs available, okay? And maybe you could even charge a premium for these packs because what they would contain is only gold foil. Now, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay, this is this is where it, it gets a little a little crazy. So they only contain gold foil. There's a very limited amount of packs available. But in, if you own one of those gold foil cards, you could, in a sense, pay DEC or credits or SPS, however the team wants to do it. Right again, like I don't have the exact numbers here. But you could essentially, I, I would say if it was going to be DEC, the way that I would do it is you would have 
a significant portion of DEC burn, maybe like 80% of DEC, and then 20% will go to the team, right? Because the team's only selling 500,000 packs now versus however many they could have sold. But this creates a future kind of income stream for the team where if you own that card, right? If you own the, the gold foil version of that card, you could sink or not sink, but you could pay uh, X amount of DEC. And that price, again, I don't have the numbers. Smarter people would have to think of what those numbers would be. But when you pay that, you create a regular foil version of the card. And so therefore, the, the beginning would be kind of crazy, right? Because demand would be off the charts. And so you would have this situation where there would only be enough cards if people are willing to buy them. So yes, you'd have that initial craze. People will go nuts, right? They're all trying to get their max gold foil set. Or if they realize that there's people out there willing to buy these cards, then they would engage in sinking, burning, you know, paying the team DEC. And this would go on for the life of the set, right? With Parallel, it's different because uh, even if, it, you know, I think even if they're like first edition or they're alpha, I think you can still mint cards from that. So at this point, I don't think that we should do it backwards compatible. And when the new set comes out, right, whatever, whatever is post rebellion, then you're no longer able to do that with your rebellion cards. You get what I'm saying? So there would still be that scarcity. It's not like five years down the road, you'd still be able to do it with uh, with whatever you know set you have, whether it's untamed or, or not. And again, I, this would only be future facing. So obviously we're not gonna do it for rebellion, but uh, let's let's call it post rebellion, right? Um, if, you, if they were to do it that way, again, it's radical, it's kind of crazy, it's uh, completely different than, than what we've had, but in my opinion, it would create immediate demand for all of those gold foil cards, people who are willing to buy packs and pay up front. And then as we go along, those cards wouldn't, quote unquote, lose their value as much. And again, I, I'm speculating on that, okay? I understand that I'm speculating on that. But the reason I say they wouldn't lose their value as much, because we've seen Rebellion cards lose their value, is because those cards would only get minted if somebody was going to buy them, right? And therefore, people would be really happy with every card that they bought. They would look at that and say, I'm only buying because I'm going to use it for uh, battles, I'm going to use it for land, I'm going to use it for whatever the case is, right? Or I'm going to give it to an alt account. We wouldn't have the situation where there'd be this declining card uh, or card value over time because those cards would only be printed if we if we wanted, you know, if, if there was demand for it. So I think we're already kind of halfway there with the way that we're doing the soulbound reward unlocks, right? At the end of the day, you you own the cards meaning that they're they're tied to your your account so you you have them they provide value and utility uh, utility to you because you're able to earn with them play with them use them right but i'm excited to see what happens in terms of their value the soulbound value uh, when the unlock goes live simply because I, I genuinely think that there's going to be an opportunity there for folks to, oh, well, not for folks, but like for the economy to dictate in, you know, a proper supply demand signal rather than, you know, the motivations of speculators to come in and say, oh, you know what, let's like, let me just buy a bunch of packs because there's the an incentive, right? I get a, I get a bonus or I get a, a promo card or I get, uh, you know, a, a discount on it. So therefore let me, let me do that. At this point, like we would sell out, in my opinion, we would sell out of packs right away at the beginning. The team would get a nice, you know, whatever, uh, nice kind of upfront payment for that. And then we would slowly, you know, expand over time as things went on. So that's all I'm going to say on that. Uh, again, it's just the, I, I woke up with this idea today because I'm just like, I really like the way Parallel is doing it. How could we apply that to Splinterlands? Oh, just do gold foil to regular foil. And we already have something similar in place with Soulbound. And if that goes well, I think that this is something that we can explore. We don't have to do it, you know, completely the way that I'm doing it or, or that, that I'm suggesting it. Uh, again, it's more so just the, the basic idea of allowing the current player base to expand the number of cards without adding all of the other variables in there of, oh, I need to buy a ton of packs or I need to do X, Y, and Z or whatever the case is. And conflicts then, conflicts could be done where like, it, you know, if I think about it now, maybe I'll do a separate video on this, like holding packs, I mean, sure, you could you could add conflicts to packs, but it wouldn't be this overwhelming amount of, of packs. Like people could buy the cards and they could hold the cards, but mostly like, you know, it would just, I, I don't know, conflicts would have to be redesigned too to, to incorporate this, but it's, 
I, I'll, I'll stop there. I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. That is all I have for you guys in this video. Otherwise, I'll catch you all in the next one. Or right, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all in the next one and see you around the game. Take care.